Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at getting user input. Now this isn't necessarily something every application is going to use, every program you ever write is going to use. Like you can reasonably understand that uh, typing into a window like this isn't the same thing as putting a comment into like, I don't know, chat GPT or writing a YouTube comment. It's not the same type of input, but there's a lot of things we can learn from getting input uh, from the user in a terminal like this. In addition, there's also some programs you can make that do this type of thing. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we can get user input. Now, just as a refresher, you can print stuff to the screen just by typing and then some stuff inside of quotation marks. We can go ahead, we can run this if I cd into E5 by typing Ruby and main.rb and then we can see print stuff to the screen. But now what happens if I want to put the word test into my application somehow? Like I want the user to be able to put something into the application. How can we do that? Well, there's a uh, weirdly aptly named keyword that we can use here, which is similar to our put sync. We can set that in a variable. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, hello, what is your name? That's going to ask the user what their name is. And then I want to get an input from the user. So I'm gonna say like user's name is equal to gets.chomp. Now, I don't like the chomp, but we gotta deal with this weird dinosaur keyword here. Basically what happens is we're gonna get a uh, input from the user and then we're going to chomp off anything after what the user types in that might just be extra, right? We can then come down here and we can put, same thing we were doing before, hello with our space plus the user's name plus the uh, exclamation mark. We can also just, you know, omit this part right here, but I guess my uh, autocomplete thinks it's important. So we're gonna just go ahead and do that. I'm now gonna go ahead and run this with a Ruby command. We'll just do Ruby main.rb. It'll say, hello, what is your name? And I'll say, my name is Dean. And then I'll hit enter. Then we can see, you know, there's Dean that I typed in and then hello, Dean. So what does this chomp actually do for us? Well, if we don't have this chomp here and we run this, Let's run the program again. I'll type Dean, hit enter. Now you can see, hello, Dean. And then our exclamation mark appears at the uh, next line. Why is that? Well, technically, when I type in Dean, there's also me hitting the enter key after I type in my name, which moves it down to the next line. So it might just be adding that enter key to the end here and moving this down to the next line. So usually, the full way to do this is just gets.chomp, just to make sure you don't run into that type of stuff. And then you could say something here, like, I don't know, my name is actually Charlie. And now if we run this, it'll say, hello, my name is actually Charlie. Again, simple on the surface, gives us a lot of flexibility. You've of course used applications like this before, where you run the program and then it, it prompts you for some input, right? We even did this when we installed Ruby in part one, where it was like, you know, press one for, uh, I don't know, the, the, the terminal. Uh, and then three was like the terminal and the ability to write code or something. So we picked like version or the first option, then we picked the third option afterwards. So this is a similar idea. Now you're probably not going to run around and create programming language installers. Uh, so don't think that you have to be familiar with how to do this. But again, this is something where it allows us to work on smaller parts of our programming repertoire before we get out into the big scary world. So what could we do here? Well, let's say, um, I don't know. Hello, how old are you? We can then get the user's age. We'll change this to be age. And then if you were to just run this, of course, this will work, except for after I type in 18, we then get an error here because it's trying to do hello plus the user's name. And you can see here, it even gives us a really helpful error. It says, did you mean user's age instead of user's name? Remember, we changed user's name to user's age. 
So this user's name right here should actually be our age. And then we can change this to just say, you are this many years old. And then now if we run this, we can say, I don't know, let's put in some number, 78, hit enter. Hello, you are 78 years old. Okay, so that's cool. But what if we want to, um, maybe we want to make a magical machine, right? So we'll say, hello, how old are you? You get the user's age, and then we can say, hello, you are now one year younger. And I'm gonna just move this over so that we can you know, keep going. And then we'll say puts the user's age. So we'll say you are now this many years old, right? Let me backspace this. So this out of the box won't work for us. If we try this, we can say ruby.main, hello, how old are you? I'll say I'm 30, uh, you are now one year younger, you are now 30 years old. So let's take this and let's think about how we can adjust this. So we get the user's age from here, but it's important to note that when we do a gets, it's going to grab the thing from our terminal and it's not necessarily gonna give us what we want it to give us, right? So up until now, it's been giving us a string just like everything else. When we run this, we could try something like what we did before. We could do user's age, uh, oops, we could do user's age minus one, just like when we did X plus Y, we could do this, this number minus one would then make you one year younger. If we now run this, we type in 30 again, we can see you are now this many years old, but we're getting an error with an undefined for this, this method. So what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, this is not a number here, right? So you gotta remember, this is gonna give us a string because the user could, in theory, put anything in here. They don't have to put 30 in here. Like I could run this and I could say, testing, uh, how are you, right? Like that's not a number. So when we try and do testing, how are you, minus one, that's not gonna work. So what we instead have to do is we have to tell this to be an integer. So just like with our two S that we used before, we can use a two I to convert this to an integer. We can then take the user's age and say user's age is equal to user's age minus one. And now if we just put this in here, we can actually get rid of all of this. If we now run this, say, hello, how are you? Or sorry, how old are you? I'll type in 30. You can see, hello, you are now one year younger. And now we run into this issue of no implicit conversion of integer. So we're going of integer into string. So we're trying to convert this into a string. Where are we doing that? Right here with our user's age. So what this is telling us is we now have this user's age as an integer, which is why we can't add it to these strings anymore. So now down here, we have to take this and convert it back into a string by using that dot two S, which is the, the inverse of this dot two I. And now finally, if we run this and we type in 30, you can now see, hello, you are now one year younger, you are now 29 years old. Th these hoops initially are gonna be something that are really annoying to deal with. You're gonna be looking at these like, why did these, absolute monsters make programming so complicated. But down the line, it's stuff like this that'll probably end up saving you a lot of time because if you didn't have something like this, you might end up in a result where if you type in, you know, the, the, the number 30, you might just get, uh, you are like 30 minus one years old here. If we run this and type in 30, you can see you are now 30 minus one years old where you would think that it would do the math for you, but it doesn't. And then other times where you actually wanted to just type in, you know, 30 minus one, you might get like the number 19, or sorry, the number 29 instead, when you really wanted it to print out 30 minus one. So these, these are things that are gonna be pretty annoying to deal with at first, but I promise you the more you practice coding and the more you work on your, your software toolkit, the more you're gonna to come to appreciate some of these things. I can't promise you'll appreciate all of them. Me personally, this is nice, but this still drives me up the walls when I have to code. 
sometimes because I'm just sitting there like, God, I wish it would just figure out what I wanted it to do, right? So don't think you're alone there. You're not a bad developer if you have those thoughts. Uh, in all honesty, even while recording this video, it probably pops into my head like 30 times where I'm like, God, how do I... How do I tell them that this is actually a good thing? Because I, on the inside, I'm sitting here like, this is so much extra work. Why do I have to do this? That's just part of the nature of working with, with programming languages is sometimes it's, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. The good thing is this is like one of the more annoying things. So as long as you can deal with this, other stuff will probably be pretty digestible for you and you'll be making you know websites in no time. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. I will have all of this code available for you in a GitHub uh, repository in the video description. So feel free to check that out. Uh, so thank you, and I will see you in the next one.